Well, welcome. Welcome to Mosaic Church. Uh, it's so good to be here with you all. New year, new space. Uh, it's very, very exciting. My name is John McHale, and I'm a pastor here at Mosaic, and we're just really glad that you're all here. This is our first service in the new space, in the new year, and we are excited, and we're really hopeful for what the Lord's going to do uh, in our time here at the North Dallas Adventist uh, Air Church. So um, I want to welcome you. A couple things just about the new space. Uh, if you go out those doors, down the hall is the restrooms, if you need the restrooms. And then I also, Max uh, Diner had mentioned, if you are new, we would love to connect with you, get to know you a little bit, hear a little bit about your story. And so you can go online and fill out a connect card, and that information will go to Max, and we'd love to reach out to you. But um, one of the things that I'm hoping for in this new year for our church is that we would begin to reflect on and think about what are the next steps that you need to take in your discipleship with Jesus. And so there's a few opportunities that I just want to put before you, and I really think about these as discipleship opportunities, and that those are the spring classes and serving on Sunday morning. We're trying to rebuild our teams. Um, we're trying to uh, build up our kids' ministry and have a welcome crew, have uh, people helping, just set this whole uh, production up. And so if you want to uh, consider serving in our kids' ministry, we're going to need a lot of help there. That's a really great opportunity to get to know kids, to get to engage in family discipleship. Um, and so Antonia and Lexi are going to be recruiting for those teams. Uh, we also need help welcoming and just being a blessing and a welcoming presence on a Sunday morning. And so uh, you can contact Max about that. Um, and then our spring classes are coming up. We got another round of Bible studies. And so we went through the book of Ruth, uh, and we're going to be going through the life of Abraham here in the spring. And we're really, really excited. And to me, Bible study is an easy win because you're having intentional engagement with God's word with other people. Uh, it's just it's a win-win across the board, and it's a great way to take a step in your own discipleship to Jesus. The other class is Passage, and I'm really, really excited about Passage uh, because it's a great uh, space where we're hoping to foster an environment for spiritual renewal. And so you might be wondering, who, who should take Passage? Really, uh, the kind of person that should take Passage is the person who is trying to realize, uh, I, I mean, sometimes in the Christian life, what happens is we can have this external uh, life that looks really good, that looks really spirit-filled, that looks really um, just Christ-like, but inside, we're all tied up in knots. There's chaos, there's anxiety, there's depression. And one of the things that Passage is trying to do is trying to help you renew that interior life, the heart, soul, and mind uh, into a Christ-like um, experience. And so would love to have you join us uh, for Passage. Um, with that, I'd love to uh, just transition here uh, to really turn our hearts to the Lord. Um, the call to worship is from Romans 15. Um, Romans 15, verse 13. Let me read that, and then I will pray, and we can get started. So, Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Hope seems risky in 2021, does it not? We had a lot of plans in 2020, um, and all those plans were dashed to pieces with the pandemic, with grief, with loss, with pain. Um, but I want to remind us as we get started this morning that the foundation of our hope is the character of God. And what that means is the foundation of our hope is firm. It's solid. And so we can take the risk to hope in 2021 because our foundation is who God is. He is good, he is faithful, he is powerful, and he is merciful. So I want to invite us into um, this service taking the risk to hope. And as we engage in prayer and seek the Lord in his power and his provision and his grace, we want to cultivate in our hearts and minds this morning a posture of hope that is built on the foundation 
of God's character. Let me pray for us as we get started. Father, we turn to you, and we declare together that you are good, you are faithful, you are true, you are strong. You are our firm foundation. We thank you and praise you for the gift of Jesus and the gospel. And we cling tightly to the promise of forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. And we ask that you would fill this space with your presence in the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Would you fill us freshly with a sense of your nearness, a sense of your power, and would you cultivate us in us a hopeful heart, hopeful mind, this experience of really leaning on you to do something in 2021 that we can't. We confess together our inability. We confess together our temptation towards self-sufficiency. And we feel very stripped by that after a year like 2020. And we ask, Lord, would you teach us this morning? Would you invite us to believe and to trust and to hope in you? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, let's stand together and sing. The Lord is great and worthy of our praise. His mercies are new every morning. His love never fails. Let's lift our hands and lift our voices this morning as we sing to him. What love could remember, no wrongs we had Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not the sun Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore Our sins, they are many, his mercy is would wait as we constantly roam. What Father so tender is calling us home. And he welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Let's get it. want to praise the Lord. of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost we stood neath the debt we could never afford our sins they are many his mercy is
morning. Let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Faithfulness this morning, God of Abraham, God of Abraham, God of covenants, of faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you just what you say. Though the storms may come and the wind may blow out.
anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. Father, we proclaim this morning that Jesus alone is worthy of our faith, of our trust. Lord, your son who became flesh for us. Lord, there's nothing we could do to be made right with you, to give ourselves a hope and a future. And Lord, we don't deserve those things. Lord, we deserve sin and death. But in Christ, the Son of God, risen from the dead, seated at your right hand, we have a hope and a future. We have security with you that can never be taken away. Lord, even when things are hard and confusing, we have peace and blessing to look forward to in your kingdom. Lord, if our hope is placed in anything else this morning, God, Holy Spirit, illuminate our hearts, lead us to repentance. We need you, Christ Jesus. Lord, as we pray this morning, Lord, give us faith. The prayers of your people accomplish much, God, because of you and you alone, because of your goodness to listen to us. So, Lord, we ask that you'd give us faith as we pray this morning, that you would hear the cries of your people, and that you would move in our midst and in our city. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 You can be seated. Uh, and as you do so, good morning. I'm so delighted to be worshiping with you this morning. I can't tell you what a joy it is to begin our year being able to worship together in person. Can we just celebrate that for a second? That is a gift. And I am tremendously grateful for the Lord who has provided for us space and resources and the ability uh, to be able to worship together. For those of you who are worshiping at home virtually with us, we love you. We, we look forward to when we can be in person with you again. Uh, and I'm so delighted to be here worshiping with you. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have some blocks of prayer because as we begin to think through, oh, how do we want to, normally on the first Sunday of the year, we start with a resolution sermon. And I don't know if you know this, if you've been around Mosaic for the last couple of years, you've seen this, and we're going to do that, it'll be next Sunday, but really my burden and the burden of the heart of our pastors was there isn't a more fitting way to begin a new year after the year we've had than to pray together. And so we're going to pray. That's what we're going to do. And so I've asked a few people to lead us in some prayer blocks, and they're going to do that, but I want to begin by anchoring us in a passage, and I want to read this for you. And just like every week when I read this word, afterwards I'll say, this is the word of the Lord, and it's an invitation for you to give thanks and to respond and say, thanks be to God. The reason we do that is that God hasn't left his people in silence, he's spoken. So let me read from Romans 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I mean, after a year like the year we've had, is there any better news that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus I mean, that is, that's gospel truth, and it was true a year ago. We knew it was true a year ago, and it's true today. 
the Lord has kept us because the Lord keeps his people because neither height nor famine nor danger nor nakedness nor sword nor pandemic can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. As we move into this next year, our resolution for this year, which I'll spend all next week talking about, is to be a people who rejoice in and release the radical love of God in Christ. Who rejoice in to be marked by a unique kind of thanksgiving, a unique kind of worship that starts within us and then moves outside of us as we release it to the world. This is what Paul is talking about. And the reason I know it is that in Romans 9, he's going to celebrate the sovereign love of God. And in Romans 10, do you know what he's going to say? He's going to say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And where does Paul end back up in Romans 11? Oh, the depths and the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are your judgments. How inscrutable your ways. For who knows the mind of our God? And who can be his counselor? Who has given a gift to him that he should be repaid for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, Paul celebrates this radical love of God in Christ. And it leads him to worship and exaltation and public celebration and thanksgiving as it spills out of him. Because this is the fundamental truth of our life. And it is no less true today than it was six months ago or a year ago or six years ago or 2,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago. That for God's people, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. And so I want to begin our time of prayer. I want to begin our time of prayer by asking God, God, would you grip us with your love? Like the psalmist says, would you restore to us the joy of your salvation? I want us to pray for joy, for hope, and to be gripped and compelled by the radical love of God that says God is holding nothing against you and has credited everything to you in Jesus. I want us to just begin that way, asking the Lord, begging the Lord, God, would you give me a fervent love and zeal for you? And for what accords with you, with what is true and good and beautiful and holy and just and generous and gracious and good and kind. So that's where I want us to begin. And I know that it's unconventional to pray like this. And I know that it feels a little bit weird. So I've asked Stephen to play behind us. And if you kind of break out of prayer and you feel like, okay, I've prayed where I can pray or things are getting a little chaotic, Stephen's just going to be playing. And so you can posture your heart. If he's singing, you can sing along with him. You're invited to do that. You're invited to pray with one another out loud, just where you're at. We won't keep it eerily silent in here, so that way you don't feel like, oh man, is someone listening to my prayer? Because I'm really being honest with the Lord. We want you to be honest with the Lord, so we'll give you a little bit of ambience, okay? A little bit of sound, so you can feel like, okay, not everybody's listening to me talking right now, because I feel that when I pray out loud in a group too. And maybe you have kids around you, and you're like, listen, pastor, you're about to ask me to pray. This kid is not going to respect my time with the Lord. I understand that. If you need to get up and walk, if you need to take a kid to the back, or maybe you just need to sit there with them and say, this is what we're praying for. We pray together. Do you want to pray? But if you need to get up and we are not, there's nobody in here that's going to look at you funny if your kid's making noise, okay? That's just a part of life here, all right? So you get up, you move around, but I want us to begin to pray. So would you just pray with me right now? Father, God, I confess, God, I confess this year that, oh my goodness, it has been so easy. It has been so easy for me to, uh, to just accept and resign myself to a reality that, that I just can't experience non-circumstantial joy. It has been so easy for me to be gripped by the inconvenience of present circumstances or the trials of a moment. And there have been trials and sorrows and griefs and there have been inconveniences. And so God, I know I know, God, that it is easy for us to be forgetful of the joy we first had, of, of the first love. God, would you grip us with the love of God in Christ? Would you compel us? Would you dig a deep well within us that says there is nothing better than being beloved in Jesus? Pray wherever you're at. Just, just You can pray out loud with the person next to you. You can pray in the quietness of your heart. Just ask the Lord, God, would you grip me with your love as if for the first time? Thank you, Lord. 
ask for joy. You can ask the Father for joy. You can say, God, would you give me joy in Jesus? God, you say that you can do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. And even joy and hope and confidence, ah, they feel like big asks. They feel like big requests. Things have felt so pressurized and contained. It's been survival. And there have been trials and sorrows and confusions and headaches and inconveniences and distractions plenty and we we give those to you because truly we just can't hold them all our shoulders are not big enough to bear the burden and some of us God have been carrying burdens far outside and we lay them at your feet and we ask, God, that you would provide us joy, peace, hope, confidence, a passion, and a fervor for you. We ask that you would grip us with the love of God in Christ. That we would walk from this place believing that we are beloved and believing that nothing could be better. I pray for the hearts and minds of our little worshipers with us this morning. I pray for children, God, that you would too, you would seize their hearts and minds. You would captivate them. I pray that they would see in their adults around them, uncles and aunts, friends, community members, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, they would see nothing is better Longing to Jesus. As we pray, hear our prayers and truly do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. By the work of the Spirit, we pray these things. In the name of the Father, who set his love upon us before the foundation of the world. In the name of the Son, who has secured the Father's love forever for good. In the name of the Spirit, who continues to cultivate our rich enjoyment of that love today. And we ask, Spirit, that you would. We pray these things in the name of Christ and by the power of the Spirit. Amen. Hey, everyone. It is good to see all of you and to be worshiping with you. And to our Mosaic kiddos, it is especially good to see you. Miss Lexi and I miss and love you and are so glad that you're here with us. Um, well, we are going to move into a time of prayer for the kids of Mosaic. Um, and as Kyle already said, there's no shortage of children here. Um, that's well known. Um, but we want to spend time to pray for them because we love and cherish and desire to see what the Lord will do through the children of Mosaic. And so um, one of the things that really excites me about Mosaic Kids in particular um, is, not, is, is really the number of kids because it's not just a group. In some ways, it's a generation that we're getting to see grow up and that we hope to see love and treasure Jesus. And so as I was thinking about how we can pray for them as a whole, um, the thing that kept coming to mind was just that they would be marked by the joy of the Lord. And so Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song I give thanks to him. And so we just want to pray that as a generation, as a whole group, and that the children of Mosaic would come to know and treasure and love Jesus, and that they would be marked by the joy of being held by him. And the second thing I want us to pray for um, is that, that there would be a harvest of relief this year, and that we would see kids. Um, we know that Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing, and so we pray that this would be the year that they hear, um, whether in Mosaic kids or at home during devotional time or from faithful grandparents or aunts and uncles, and that we would see a harvest of belief and righteousness, that there are
there are many things to be said about 2020 and 2021, but could it be said that this was the year that children came to faith? And then we want to pray that for those who already do believe in Jesus, that they would grow and become faithful followers, that we would see, as Colossians 1.28 says, that they would be presented fully mature in Christ. And so we're going to pray for those things. First, that this generation of Mosaic kids would be marked by joy in the Lord, and that the kids of Mosaic would believe and become. And so if you have kids with you, I'd encourage you to pray with them, pray over them. Um, or you can, if you don't have them with you, you can pray for the children in your gospel community or children in your life. And so I'm going to kick us off, and then you can continue praying from your seats. Father, we do thank you for the privilege and the gift that it is to bear witness to this generation of children. Um, and we do come before you asking, interceding for them, that they might know you and love you and treasure you and exalt you. And so would you hear us now, would even now you begin to water um, seeds in the heart of these kids. I want you to pray in your seat. are open with gratitude we raise our song to you so come and fill the praises of your people with grace and truth you make us new church that believes in the children here, and we want to see them know you and love you. I pray that we would be faithful to contend for them, that we would see them be a generation that loves you and seeks you. Would you help us? Um, in Jesus' name. a time of prayer for uh, healing now, prayer for healing. So our verse uh, that we're looking to is from Psalm 30. It's Psalm 32. It says, O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Um, there are a number of different things that we probably need healing for, right, that we have uh, that we continue to pray for. But the three that we're going to focus on today are uh, ourselves, our own hearts. Uh, that's number one. And then our, our city and our country is number two. And then our church, Mosaic Church as a whole, that's number three. And, and just, as a, just as a point of confession, just to kind of kick us off here, um, when things start going badly, when things start going poorly, I don't know if you guys have a tendency to do this, but I have a tendency, no matter if it's my fault or not, 
I, I put that on myself, and I say, well, this is, this is who I am. Things going poorly is, is who I am as a person, right? And <laughs> that was pretty much all of 2020, right? And, and in big ways and in small ways. But that's, that's not who I am, and that's not who you are. You are who you are in Christ Jesus because you are, because you are in Christ Jesus, right? It's, it, you are not the failures or the frustrations or the fears in your life. That's, that's not who I am. I see my entire family nodding in the back. That's not, that's, not who, that's not who you are if you are in Christ Jesus. So I want to remind us as, as we pray for healing for our own hearts and then for our city and our country, I think if we learned anything from 2020, it's that we have a long way to go as it relates to uh, racial injustice and social unrest. Those were huge themes for our city and for our country and a long way to go in our own hearts for those things, in my own heart. Right, so let's pray for healing uh, on that front as well. And then as a church, I think this one's less obvious, but uh, this distance that we've had from one another has, has affected us. It's affected us in ways that we might not be able to see right now, but that could play out for the next few years. And we will be unable to move forward in the ways that God wants us to without healing from that and without the Holy Spirit's power in that right? Um, so let's pray for healing as a church. Just, I was praying this yesterday, just for us to be galvanized around, around the Lord. Like that, that's, that's the way we were formed two, two years ago, three years ago. Let's pray for that now. We need that now going into 2021. So I'll give you guys a couple of minutes. Pray for your own heart, for healing for your own heart, healing for our country and for our city, and then healing for Mosaic Church. Father, we come before you and, and we, just, we ask for healing. You tell us in Psalm 30 that if we, if we cry out and if we ask, that you will heal us. And I think sometimes, Lord, we uh, overcomplicate that. We make it more than it should be. But it, it says very simply in Psalm 30, if we cry out, you will heal us. And so we cry out today, Lord. We cry out for ourselves. I, I know I do for myself. I need healing in my own heart. Uh, I, need, I need reminders that... I am who I am in Christ, and I am not a result of my uh, 
what I do or do not accomplish, what I do or do not achieve. Lord, I need healing. Um, we, we want healing in our city and our country. Uh, I pray that we would align ourselves, Lord, with, uh, with who you are, with, 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 with who Jesus was to those around him in the Bible, with how he treated others in the Bible, and that we might do the same in our city and that we might be a light that shines within our country. And then lastly, Lord, we pray for healing for our church. Lord, we need it. We feel the effects of, um, of not having gathered. And we are, we are overjoyed to be gathered here together today. It, it was such a great joy to walk in here today, Father, and to see people that we haven't seen in six months or nine months or a year. That's a great joy, but we need, we need healing for the next several months and years. And, and I pray that we would, I pray that you would compel us and remind us that our, that our healing and our, that our restoration does not come from ourselves. It doesn't come from uh, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. It comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we uh, commit to just praying for that for the next several days, weeks, and months as we enter back in together. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God for 2021. I know we are not assured that this year is going to look radically different from 2020, um, but we have hope in that. We have hope in the Lord in that. Um, 2020 was incredibly disruptive. And, and naturally, because of the pandemic, because of shelter in place, we, we kind of had this inward focus. Um, I, I know I had that. I know our family had that. Um, and that's, that's, not, that's not something to be ashamed about. There's kind of seasons where, there, where there it's natural to just have different rhythms. In 2020, it was natural to kind of have an inward focus. Um, but this morning, I would like to encourage and invite us um, to lift our eyes off of ourselves, outside of our own homes. And in 2020, we did see some um, positive things looking inward, right? We um, saw gospel communities getting very creative with how, how to look um, to serve neighbors. And we had men's and women's Bible study. In fact, um, this verse that we're going to read um, is going to come from the spring study, Life of Abraham. So this is in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, the Lord said, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward. So the context of this verse, God is, is inviting Abram to look up from his circumstances and to see the goodness that the Lord has put in front of him. This is the promised land. And so the two prayer points that I want to put in front of you this morning. One is for us to look up at the Lord, to continue to look to the Lord, that he would lift our eyes toward him, and that he would draw us near to him through his word, through prayer, and through his people. And then the second thing, um, just uh, to look outward, to look to our neighbors. The vision of Mosaic Church is to see the gospel and its fruits cover every square inch of Richardson. And so we saw some creative ways in 2021. I'd love to encourage you toward more of that in 2021. Uh, just to, to look up from our homes, to, to go invite our neighbors to things, to, um, to love on other families at our schools um, and in our neighborhoods. And so I invite you to take a couple of minutes um, to pray. Uh, first towards eyes towards the Lord and second toward um, neighbors and others in the city.
Heavenly Father, I pray that in this year that you would draw us near to you through prayer, through gathering as a people. And God, we are grateful to be able to gather this morning. Father, we do pray that 2021 would look vastly different than 2020 and that you would give us opportunities to get in front of our neighbors, to be creative, um, God, at our jobs and in our schools, to just love this city. And Father, we know that if these are our efforts alone, that they will fall woefully short because we cannot save, but God, you can. And we pray that you would bless the mission of this church and, and that we, as we walk out of these doors today, um, that we would be taking your presence throughout the city of Richardson. And Father, we pray for changed hearts. We pray for saved lives in this city. God, we pray that Richardson, Texas would look radically different this year and more. And Father, we pray these things in your name because you have that power. We pray these things in your name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're going to move into a time of celebrating the Lord's Supper. And so if you want to uh, take out your communion elements and get those ready. Um, we share this meal every week at Mosaic, and it's a meal that assures us of the promise of God's love. And the bread represents the broken body of Jesus, and the cup represents his shed blood for sinners. And as we eat the bread and drink the cup, there's a representation of our faith. As we internalize the good news of the gospel, there is a, a, a demonstration of the faith we have in Jesus. And I think sometimes the, the movement of the soul to believe is complex. It's hard. It's fraught with challenges. But what we're invited to and what we're reminded of every week as we eat the bread and drink the cup is just the movement of the heart to fall upon God's love and God's grace in Christ. And so on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, the blood of the new covenant. Let's do this together. Paul goes on to say that for often, as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, let's stand together. We're going to sing a couple more songs just to celebrate and close out our time together.
by the flood, upheld, protected, gathered up. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things. Every vow we've broken and betrayed, you are the faithful one, and from the garden to the grave, find us together. worthy.
my helper, my healer, my blessed redeemer, my answer, my saving grace. For my hope in the shadow, my strength in the battle, my anchor for all my days. When you stand by my that our service is with a benediction, which is just a prayer of blessing and sending. The words will be on the screen behind me. You can read and respond with me. Let's see, are they? Maybe not. I may not have put them in there. This could be my fault. It's not production's fault. It is my fault. Peter is saying, it is your fault. So I will say, let me, let me read the last passage of our benediction for you. This is from Ephesians 3. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Bless you. You are dismissed in the name of the Lord. Glad that you've worshiped with us this morning.